What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now Plus. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to go over a couple news stories you might have missed for February 2nd, starting with Hogwarts Legacy just very quickly and very, I guess, non-specific because I can't show spoilers, nor will I, but there is a lot of leaks on this game. So whether you're, and I have no judgment either way, whether you're super interested in like seeing them or whether you are like avoiding it like the plague, whichever side you stand on is totally fine, but they are out there. There is a lot. You know, there's been several waves of the leaks, the art book kind of thing. This is like the most legit. People legitimately have early copies, not just reviewers, people that literally, by some grace of God, got the game days early. And there are videos out there. There is the map is fully, well, not fully, I'd say maybe like 80% found. I think the person who went through the map didn't explore everywhere yet. But you have the map, wand customization, some cutscenes, some uh, open world, let's say, like going from point A to point B. There's a lot. I've said uh, to some of my friends behind the scenes, I would not be surprised at all because people do have it early, right? They've gotten it the last couple days. By the time the game comes out, Tuesday or Monday night or you know whenever you're able to play it, if it's the deluxe edition, of course, not the standard, that's Friday, the ending's going to be out. I think we're within a few days of the ending of this game being really easily accessible, let's say, on YouTube. And again, that's if you care, if you want to watch the ending, that's great. If you're avoiding it, well, you need to get away fast. You know what I mean? Whichever side you're on. But uh, there's a lot of Hogwarts Legacy leaks happening right now. Second thing I want to talk about is this sense from a lot of people, myself included, that something is definitely imminent regarding PlayStation. And this stems from actually the thing you see right there behind me. There's the live from PS5 ad, right? And now I believe we've gotten two of them. The one that PlayStation, uh, just like the PlayStation brand itself dropped today, seems like a longer version. There was one post, I think on the UK one yesterday. It's the same one, just like additional things. But we've gotten two, basically. The one was Spider-Man, right? And the Spider-Man thing leaked. So I think it was Sunday. There was that leak of the live-action Spider-Man, you know, ad. And it's like, oh, my God, are we getting something Spider-Man related? We could. We could. I think as part of a PlayStation event. Because since then... We got the full ad, Spider-Man just being one of it, right? And there was more, I think Uncharted 5 was teased. I actually made a video on the main channel about that. So we had that, and then now we have this. So they literally are spending God knows how much money. There's a legit axe that they like put. I mean, not a legit, you know, it's not a real axe. But, you know, they are going all out with these like real props in the real world. And they're faking news reports, right? All this kind of stuff. But what's interesting about this one, right? They talk about the axe. They talk about like a Fimble Winter and all that. But what they also say is that this is like the beginning of something larger. Like there's more coming. And, you know, there's the theme of God of War. And... If you're looking at it strictly from like a God of War Ragnarok perspective, you're thinking, all right, well, maybe they're saying that because like this is the beginning of Ragnarok, right? It's kind of like leading into it. But if you take a couple steps out and you assume that they're not talking about the brand or the one specific game of God of War, they're actually talking about PlayStation, is this the beginning of something larger? Why? Like the question I have is why? Why do you have these ads randomly appearing, right? On this last week of January, first week of February. There's all of this money you're throwing in. They're cool ads live from PS5. Like, it's kind of unique. It's kind of different from what they've done before. But is it going anywhere? I think it is. I think, and honestly, I want to include it in this video because it's pos tomorrow, Friday, it's possible tomorrow you get an announcement. It's possible next week you get an announcement. I really think they're teasing a showcase. You could say state of play, and which state of play, right, smaller, a little bit more condensed. Why, again, like, why would they do all this? And it could just be because they're having fun with it. They're just doing it. I suppose that's fine. It's all speculation anyway. You can let me know what you think in the comments, but I think it's kind of building to probably a showcase. And then the final news story I want to talk about is on Gears of War. So there's a couple parts to this rumor. This does come from Jeff Grubb, who's kind of been on a roll today with, with just saying things. And whether they're right or wrong, that's, you know, up for us to uh, debate. I, you know, he's generally much more right than he is wrong. And this one's interesting. This one also is kind of sad. So the rumor here is that the Coalition, and we've heard this for a long time, the Coalition was working on several different things, right? And in Xbox Studios, actually quite 
quite a few studios tend to have these passion projects, these smaller things, Hi-Fi Rush, a Pentiment, right? There's a couple examples here and there of they're doing the big stuff. They're making Gears of War 6, but they're also working on smaller, uh, just scoped projects. Well, the rumor is pretty much all those projects have been eliminated because of the wave of layoffs that Microsoft did. A lot of the smaller, right, these uh, not indie, but these passion projects, a lot of them are put to bed, and it seems like the coalition is full on. Uh, about a year or so ago, they started work on Gears of War 6, and that is the game. That's the game that they're making. No other game. Uh, at least that's what it sounds like. So I I believe it. I mean, again, it's just a rumor. Um, it, it, it certainly kind of piggybacks off of the other rumors from the past that they were making other things. Besides, so you have to kind of believe that first. You know what I mean? But I'm, I, I, I do believe it. And it sucks. And again, that's kind of the sad part of it where it's like, Gears of War is good. I, I'm a general fan of Gears of War. Um, I'm not like massively into it, but I, I've enjoyed them for what they are. And I'll certainly take Gears of War 6. On the other side, well, it's sad because well, the layoffs, firstly, you don't want to ever see anybody losing their jobs. But number two, these layoffs, it is scary. And I've talked about this before here and there. I don't like to get into like that kind of real world stuff because it kind of brings down the mood. I think there's going to be a lot of this this year. There's going to be a lot of people that lose their jobs, and it's going to freaking suck. It's going to be the worst. But beyond them just losing their jobs, not only do they suffer, but also consumers getting these games, it's going to be interesting to see what games survive, right? How many of these teams are left standing? If there was a team that was working on one big game, one small game, is the remedy to the recession, like all this stuff, is to, you know, the way you escape it, is it to cancel the small one and just focus on the big one. And, and ultimately, kind of everybody loses with that, by the way. This isn't even like a Gears of War thing, but you lose a lot of the experimentation with that, right? You could probably envision Gears 6 being good and all that, but which one is going to maybe like push the boundaries? Which one is going to be like a little, maybe not push the boundaries, but be a little different, be something that we're not really expecting? It's probably always the small one, right? It's it's hi-fi rush. It's games like that. It's games that kind of come out of uh, left field, and they're smaller. They're smaller in scope. They're smaller in the team that makes them. And when you lose people, sadly, because you have to lay them off, you lose those projects as well. So, you know, gears related, but also kind of scary, like dead serious, kind of scary for the rest of the industry and the rest of the year, because things are not going to get better. They're going to get so much worse. And, and we'll just have to see, I want to say like, I'm hoping as many of these games as humanly possible survive this, this kind of cut because ultimately you cut the people. And then by doing so, you have to kind of reorganize and say, all right, well, we were thinking of doing two games. We got to get rid of one. We're just going to go with the safe bet, right? The bigger one. And if that happens across the board, less games to play, but also I would argue kind of less innovation, less different things, and, and all of that, all of that entire situation sucks. So let me know what you guys think about all these topics in the comments below. Make sure you guys are subscribed, bell icon turned on, and I hope to see you all on the next one.